In the last video, we saw um, a little bit of problem with the database query, um, for, like for upcoming events and for the newsletter, it retrieves the latest one, um, but in our database, our, our, for our user interface, we allow the user to create a newsletter and then set a publication date, so that way they can make it a week or two in advance, and if they don't want it published right away, it won't be published. But the way our query is set up right now, it's going to publish the, the newest one regardless of the publish date. So what we've got to do for both the newsletter and on the about page for the upcoming, or I'm sorry, on the home page for the upcoming events, is change the query to say, get the newest one that's um, not past, or you know, not out in the future. We want, we want to get one that's ready to publish. So to do this, I've already fixed it here on the about page. We just change the query by adding this little section. And let me cut this out first. This is what our query looks like when we went and build our access data source. We said, you know, go get everything from the events table um, and order them by the display date. And so we'd get the, the newest one. But the problem is, again, that date might be uh, might not be here yet. So when we sit this little bit of code in here, oops, this where says, hey, you know, just make sure the display date um, field is less than the current date. And with access, we use this function to get the current date. If we can do it in SQL Server, then we'll use this get date function instead. So we're going to basically do the same thing in the newsletter. I'm just going to copy this chunk of code and then we'll go to our newsletter. I meant to single click, not double click. But anyway, we'll go down here to our access data source and we'll uh, paste that in here where the display date, because we use the same field name display date, so that'll work out here. And I'm also going to copy the comment over just in case I ever need to grab that again someplace else. So that's, anyway, that's that's the change we made to fix that. Find the newsletter page. And again, I'm just going to paste that comment in here. So if you're doing this for your own, you know you have to change the field name here. And then again, if you're going to do it, once I put this in production, use the SQL server, we'll have to change this function from now to get date. But that's the end of this video.